brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. I hope this how-to video helps you out. And next time you need parts for your vehicle, think of 1AAuto.com. Thanks. In this video, we're going to show you how to install fender flares on this Dodge Ram. This one's a 2008. And this rugged style fender flare is going to be the same procedure for 2002 to 2008 Dodge Ram 1500s and 2003 to 2009 25 and 3500s. You'll need new fender flares from 1AAuto.com, flat blade screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, utility knife. Depending on the hardware you're using, you might need a socket. In our case, it's an 8mm with a ratchet. And if you have any rust issues, you may need some sandpaper and rust preventative paint. Inside the wheel well at the bottom of the fender, we have some Phillips heads and some 8mm screws. Our truck has some hardware missing, so your truck may have more hardware or hardware of a different style. Regardless, the process of installation will be the same. Before installing your fender flare onto your truck, you want to take the supplied seal here, remove the 3M tape from the roll. You're going to want to do that as you go, little by little. Lay the edge onto your flare, flush with the bottom here. Just walk that seal on there. Just work that right along the flare, remembering to pressure adhesive on, on the outside edge here. When you finish working the seal to the other end of the flare, cut it flat and start the next flare. Working on the passenger side, we've cut our wheel all the way to the right to make it easier to access these lower bolts inside the wheel well. We'll take our fender flare and just hold it up roughly where it's going to be. Sometimes these badges will interfere, especially with our larger flares, but in this case it clears. So we'll get underneath and see where our bolt holes line up with our hardware. We have one at the front one at the bottom, and one at about the 11 o'clock position. So we'll remove that hardware and use it to install our flare. Again, your hardware may be slightly different. The alignment of your flare may be slightly different. but the same basic concept is going to be the same throughout. Our bottom screw here is a Phillips head. We'll remove that. And the reason these flares don't use every single bolt hole along the way is so that your inner wheel well doesn't have to be lined up at the same time as the fender, which makes a lot of work and complication in order to remove and reinstall these parts. Reinstall our bottom screw, in our case a Phillips head. We aren't going to tighten that down all the way because we want to line up the rest of our hardware and make sure that the flare sits nicely on the fender before we lock anything into place. We'll move up to the 11 o'clock position, tighten that up with our 8 millimeter socket. Step back and make sure that your flare is lined up to your liking. Once you've made sure that your flare is where you want it to be, finish tightening down your hardware. Just like that, this flare goes on without any modifications to the truck and looks like it came from the factory. Our fenders lined up nicely, reusing the factory hardware in a few locations, but our kit includes some self-tapping screws and clips, uh, some plastic retainers, so that if your fenders don't line up quite the way you want to, you can use the self-tapping screws or drill holes and use the plastic retainers to secure your fenders a little tighter in a few more places. Our truck, like many trucks of all makes and models, has rust over the rear tires on the wheel arch on the side of the bed. It's very common for these to rust out and people to buy fender flares 
to try to cover over them and hide that rust spot. But what a lot of people don't do is take the time to remove the scaling and bubbling paint and coat the rust so the fender flare not only hides it but keeps it from getting worse. We'll show you how to do that. Start by taking a fresh sharp razor blade, cutting around the edges where our bubbling is to score it. We'll take a flat blade screwdriver, scrape away all the bubbled paint up to our score marks. All that score mark does is keeps that chipping controlled so it doesn't break off into our good paint where there's no need to scale it off. This guy is a little harder to see, but we do have a rust bubble starting right here. So before that gets worse and expands or goes through, I'm going to score those edges with the razor blade as well. While there was no rust under this bubble, that deformation in the paint would allow water to set in and eventually make our truck look like this. So we'll finish scraping off all our scaling. Then we recommend you sand it and treat it with the rust preventative coating or paint of your choosing. Line up the body tabs in your flare. See where everything lines up. In this case, we'll remove our two 8 millimeter screws in the rear and use the two holes in the front fender for our plastic retainers. Line up the holes and start reinstalling your hardware. Remember to leave it loose for now so we can line everything up before we lock our flare into place. See here that our body line doesn't really line up well. This is why we leave all of our hardware loose because simply sliding it up and pushing it in closes that gap. Tighten our hardware. Go ahead and install your fender flares on the opposite side of the truck the same way we showed you to here on the passenger side and with just a little bit of work to move the fenders around and make sure that you take the time to line them up properly, these fenders look like they were installed from the factory. Thanks for tuning in. We hope this video helped you out. Next time you need parts for your car, please visit 1AAuto.com. Also check out our other helpful how-to as well as diagnosis videos.